Well now, this is, uh, this is happening. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my little piece of paradise I call the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. It is Aloha Friday, finally. Happy Aloha Friday, everybody out there. It is finally time to get in to the 2007 Silverado. We are in fact back with the OG Silverado today. This is something I have wanted to do for so, so, so incredibly long, and you guys have finally pressured me into doing it. What we are doing today, as you've seen in the thumbnail and title of video, the bed liner. We are getting rid of this ugly stock plastic bed liner I bought the truck with years ago, and in fact, replacing it with a DIY Raptor spray in bed liner. I have never seen the inside of this bed of this truck. The plastic has been in no time, so I hope it's not as bad as it might be, but we will find out here in just a second. And let's start sanding. Lots of sanding. Let's get the party started. All right, guys, so what we have here are our four bottles of the material that's actually going to be sprayed onto the bed. This is actually our bed liner, a can of the hardener. We're going to mix these two together. And as you well know, a major piece of this project is in the preparation. We're obviously going to have to pull out the plastic bed liner. I'm then going to go in and sand every surface and all the nooks and crannies and crevices. To have a successful finish, it's all in the preparation work. So we're going to spend our time, take our time, prepare this properly. So let's get this thing pulled off, see the state of the union. Ugh, whatever's under here. So I kind of suspected this when I bought the truck again this was years ago back in Waianae, Hawaii and I noticed there was a little bit of paint and it made me assume that this might have been a work truck at one time or another. I have no idea on the vehicle history. We have quite a bit of yeah this thing has been used and abused in its former life probably as a work truck. This is just the tailgate portion so I'm kind of curious how this is going to look under here. Right, bed liner is out. I used a tie down to tie up this one side to compress kind of to get it out because I didn't want to scratch up the sides of my bed while pulling it out. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. And funny enough, I found a bunch of stuff up against the cab here. And one of the things I just found was this. Hey, so I just pulled the bed liner out and look what I just found. The first time we went out to Trax Beach. That's hilarious. And that's been stuck in the bed under the bed liner all this time. There you go. Super cool stuff. That actually really just made my day. I think it's stuck behind there. I don't know. But also the good news is here, the bed is actually in really good condition. I was really worried it was going to be all scraped up and dented up like a normal work truck would be. And it kind of is, but it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I need to go ahead and spray all this out. This is a lot of dirt and sand and all kinds of stuff in here. So let's get the truck turned around, get this thing sprayed out and keep on moving. Well guys, it's obviously not nighttime. It is in fact Saturday morning. 
the three-year-old was at the grandparents' house last night, so I had to go pick him up, and then the eight-month-old decided he didn't want to go to sleep at all last night, so I was up all night and couldn't get to the truck. So we are back at it Saturday morning. We went ahead and took our degreaser and water, wiped down the bed of the truck, got a lot of that dirt and grime off, so we're pretty much ready to start sanding now. Also, masking tape. I masked off the edge where I don't want to sand, so basically this masking tape is going to provide a little bit of a protective barrier between the sandpaper and the paint. So I want to keep this lip painted, but do the bed coating from here down. This is going to allow me to kind of nick at the edge a little bit to ensure we get this completely sanded. That way the bed coating does stick and provide the longevity that I want. So I have a ton of work to do. I'm kind of <laughs> delaying that right now. I've also noticed there's quite a few, uh, call it a little bit of damages to the bed. I don't know what the previous owner or owners have done, but there's drilled holes here and here and there. I don't know if they had some kind of like a pipe rack going on, but this is all bent up as well. So I'm gonna take a hammer and see if I can work this back down. It's really dented right there. So we're gonna go ahead and smooth out some of those surfaces as best we can before we apply, but we have 80 grip sandpaper. You should probably really going like 100 to 125 grit, but I'm gonna go a little bit crazy, a little bit impatient with sanding. So straight to 80 grit to get that paint surface prepped get it nice and abrased, that way the wrapper coating will stick. I'm still delaying, guys. I don't look forward to standing this entire bed. So you guys are going right back to a time lapse. So once again, here's the music and Dream go. big, cause boy, you're gonna make it. Stand tall, there's a higher road you're taking. Let go of everything that you know. In the darkness for 40 days I've been Searching for holy flames A sign to light up the way So can you help me out? Can you help me out? It is so windy today and it's kind of ridiculous. If you guys don't know, my driveway also serves as a wind tunnel and it is fall. And because it's fall, all the leaves are falling and every single leaf from the neighborhood comes down my driveway. As you can see all these leaves down here. It does this little cyclone thing at the end of the driveway and then loops back around and then everything just lands in the garage. Like, I'm not kidding. This garage was spotless when the day started, but now uh, it's filled with leaves. And I'm not gonna bother raking them up because once I do, more leaves will come in. So I'll just figure out, wait till all the leaves from the neighborhood land in my garage, and then I'll finally rake them up. Guys, we are looking good. We are almost there. We have everything sanded down. Everything looks good. We have a few little nooks and crannies. We're gonna go in with sandpaper just to rough it up real good. I want this to stick everywhere. We're probably okay to spray as it sits right now. But for example, right here, I couldn't get the sander in. I gotta go in and rough that up a bit to make sure that the coating is gonna adhere to the paint. So I'm gonna tape it off real nice right here so it gets a nice, clean, even line when it's all said and done. But that's the progress so far, guys. I've been sanding for hours, a little more to do, and then we'll pull the truck into the garage and then we're gonna have to hang a lot of plastic. We also took the tailgate off. You couldn't see that. We did in fact take the tailgate off because I wanted to get all the way to the edge here. I'm also gonna tape off at the very bottom edge to go and spray the tailgate as well.
guys, as you can see, things are getting a little, uh, a little out of hand. So as you can clearly see by my garage doors still moving, it is so windy outside. I just unfortunately can't be spraying this bed liner in the wind like that. So I've tried to make myself a makeshift uh, paint booth kind of thing out of plastic and hanging it on anywhere. I've never sprayed this stuff before, so I don't know how messy it is. It has a lot of overspray or if it's really direct. I'm hoping that's the case. But if it's not, I think I'm somewhat prepared for any overspray. So we have plastic on our floors. We basically have sealed this off so I can spray the inside of the bed really easy. This is a lot of work, guys. This is a lot of work for this moment. We got our gun. We have our four bottles of this wrapper coating. What we're gonna be doing is actually using the hardener here. We're gonna use a little bit of hardener. We've got a measuring cup. We're gonna put the hardener directly into this bottle, which is actually pretty cool. Mix the bottle up for two minutes, and then we're gonna use the gun, stick the gun in the bottle, and then begin to spray. We're gonna use my compressor. I believe we're all set to go there. Okay, we're back from Ace Hardware. Actually, I forgot I did not have a pressure regulator because you'd need between 50 and 60 PSI going through this gun or terrible things will happen. Actually, I don't know what will happen, but they recommend between 50 and 60. Pretty much ready to go from the compressor side. And then we're gonna get to the Raptor coating, get the hardener mixed in to the bottle, take the bottle, shake it up for two minutes, get the gun and go. I need to hurry because in 30 minutes from now, 2.4 hours of Le Molitz is happening. And yes, in fact, I am a huge Cleese McFarlane fan and I have the pay-per-view, kind of. I bought something from Summit and got it for free, so. Yes, we're tuning into that in 30 minutes. I need to hurry. On this last one, I have one bottle left, the entire truck's coated, and it's got a good coat on it. So this stuff actually goes a long way. But for the last coat, what I'm gonna do, actually I'm gonna turn the pressure up just a little bit and shoot from far off to kind of let the particles land across the truck. There's a few lines that I can see kind of where I've started and stopped. But what I'm gonna try to do is kind of make it like give it that matte look over the top by just kind of shooting from far away at high pressure and letting the particles settle in. That's the plan anyways. air. Woo, it's a good looking truck. Well, all four bottles are applied. It went on really well. It looks really good right now. I actually do need to get in there and actually take off the masking tape before it hardens up because once it hardens up, good luck getting that masking tape off. You actually do take it off while it's still a little bit tacky. So we do need to do that still. I'm going to give it this quick second and let this place air out just a little bit. Uh, my makeshift paint booth worked good, not great. There is still a lot of overspray and I'm kind of worried that I'm not gonna be able to get it up. Yeah, that's, ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, that got everywhere. <laughs> oh, dang it. But dang, that looks good. Oh, brother. That looks so dang good. So dang good, I didn't get out of here. <laughs> all right, we're gonna give this two minutes to let it air out a little bit and then I'm gonna pull off all that masking tape and then assess the damage of my garage because I'm going to have black everywhere. The ground's a little bit sticky, but it might just be my shoes, but it was all worth it because look at the final product. Look at this finish. It looks so good. I can't believe this came out of a DIY $100 kit off of Amazon. Once it's completely cured, I'll get a better idea of how it feels, but the look of it, 
This looks like a Linex type of kit. This definitely looks like a high dollar OEM type finish, but it's coming out of a hundred dollar DIY kit. And the fun part about doing it yourself on top of learning new skills, which is a big kind of motivator of mine, you can get creative and actually do things yourself as you're working. If you're giving this to a company, they're going to pull it in with the 10 other trucks they have to do that day. They're going to knock it out, spray it, give it back to you. There's really not a lot of time and attention given to your trucks. But when you do it yourself, you can give it that time and attention that you want. And for example, here on the lip, I wanted the lip to be blue. And on this down crease right here, that's where I laid the tape. So that's my line. I have my line X here, or not my line X, I'm calling it line X, the Raptor liner here in the blue lip all the way down. And here at the end, I kind of wanted this to come to a point because when the tailgate closes, I don't want any blue to be visible. So I did that as well. So little things like that that you don't see until you're actually doing it, you can take the time and do it because you are doing it yourself. That's what we're all about here. I love doing things myself with my own two hands. My other hand's holding the camera. But we're gonna give this some time to let it cure, let it harden, probably overnight. And then we'll be back tomorrow. Pull this thing in the sunlight, give you guys a real look at what this is gonna look like from now on. This is epic. Thank you guys, by the way, for pressuring me into doing this. This is great. be completely transparent, when I started this project, I was hopeful but not optimistic at the finish that we would end up with on this bed liner. 100 bucks for the entire kit, came with the spray gun, the material, the hardener, 100 bucks for all of that, and I didn't imagine it could come out as well as, as it did. I keep looking at it because I'm not looking at you because I, in fact, looking at the bed liner, it looks so good. This turned out absolutely beyond my expectations. The finish on this, it looks fantastic. It hid every single imperfection I had in my bed. This truck was used and abused before they put that plastic bed liner in. There was dings, there were scratches, there was dents, all kinds of stuff. Took a hammer, smoothed that side out, and literally you can't see any imperfection anymore. The actual color and sheen of this, I didn't expect it to be this glossy. I thought it was gonna be more of a matte finish, but I kind of like it. Those of you OG will know the roof of my truck is a satin black wrap. And so you have that matte finish, but more of a glossiness to it. And actually the bed liner almost matches up perfect with the satin roof. So I really like visually how this came out. The texture is amazing. You're not gonna slide or slip. You can actually throw stuff back here without it sliding around your truck. I really could not be happier with the way this turned out. Man, that is solid. Now disclaimer, this is quite a bit thinner than you would get with an OEM or like a Linex. When Linex does it, when you get an OEM finish, it's a lot thicker. My dad's bed liner in his 99 Silverado is kind of an OEM finish, so it is a, quite a bit thicker. So you don't get the thickness with this one, but time will tell on durability, but my initial look, it looks pretty dang good. It's pretty well, pretty well put together. Now this was a relatively easy install. It was a little bit messy. I do need to clean my garage up a little bit afterward, but it took, you know, half a day's work, a couple hours sanding and prepping it, getting degreaser, cleaning off the surface, and then essentially getting the gun and spraying it. Spraying it was the easiest part of the entire project. You do need a compressor. You do need an air regulator, obviously the hose and attachments, but the kit comes with the gun. The kit comes with the hardener and the material, and 
you're all set to go. Now it's up to you if you wanna do it outside, you can decrease the amount of dust being sprayed around. They can definitely do this outside. I did it inside to try to control it and it's been incredibly windy the last couple of days. So that was kind of a necessity. Ooh, the truck does in fact need a bath. Changes the bath really bad, but I wanna thank you guys so much for tuning in for today's video. I'm really excited the way this turned out. Hopefully it helped you in some way, shape or form. And as I'm walking back in this garage, you guys, I am just overly grateful at everything you've done for me and on this channel. We are a small channel, we're a very small channel, but we've come so far from that little two car garage in Hawaii, that rented home we had to this little piece of paradise that we've created with your support. I am beyond grateful for everything you've done for me. If you wanna join the Lone Star Hawaiian family, you have not yet, scroll down, hit that subscribe button below, be part of the Lone Star Hawaiian family. And as always, please go down, smash that like button below, it helps the channel out tremendously. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, Lone Star Hawaiian on Instagram, get updates there before you see anything drop in on YouTube. But because you stayed till this point in the video, guys, I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek, a little treat here, because we got quite a few parts in over the last week or so. So uh, hiding behind here, we got a massive box right there. We got a box there, we got a rough country box, a box that says Dynamat, another rough country box, and a few other boxes over there. Yes, we have quite a bit going on very, very soon. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of those upcoming videos, those amazing parts being installed very shortly. We'll see you in a few days for our next video. As always, y'all take care and aloha.